Hi, it's Terry Dennery of the MathWorks. Uh, so in this video, we're going to kind of work on this. And we saw that we came up with a really good trick in our initial demo where we had our real DC motor with the Arduino processor um, kind of running code generated from our simic model that we're using there. And so our, our piece that we added that addressed this quite well was a feed forward piece. It's the basic idea of using what you know about the DC motor to estimate very well uh, what the required voltage might be. Okay, and the general idea is that we're going to take what we know about the plant, right? And we have a really good model here. And so it's really about kind of taking that and making it kind of an inverted form. And so the, the term really is inverse. Um, dynamics and so we're going to call this inverse DC motor okay and so what does that mean well a, a few things but one is that we're going to tell it how we want it to move and we're going to figure out what is the voltage required to do that right and so I'll just begin by turning our output into a V for voltage let's get rid of the units of degrees right and oh, it doesn't like that that's called V already. So let's, let's do it this way. Um, and so it's going to be a little bit more than angle. And, and so I'm going to just call it motion. And we'll underscore PVA, meaning it'll be a signal of position, velocity, and acceleration of that shaft. And it'll be expressed in degree comma S for degrees and seconds. But it'll be position, velocity, and acceleration each composed and expressed in units formed with degrees and seconds. All right, and oh, I guess we can now go in and rename this. And we'll call it V. All right, so that's part of the inversion. Turns out the, the everything kind of gets inverted. And so it means that taking all this information, it's describing the mechanical shaft, let's make that first and let's make all this electrical stuff be second, all right? All right, and so let's jump in here now. And so what's coming in now is motion. And I think I'll just be simple and I'll call it PVA. All right, and I'm going to introduce a DMUX block so we can unpack this. Stretch it. And it's going to have three components. All right, and it'll be position, velocity, and acceleration. All right, and so the components for torque, well, one of them's gonna be damping. All right, so I've hit control I, and so that second signal will come in here and multiply by the damping coefficient. All right, and then the third component is gonna multiply by J. Okay. And so we'll add these two together. Send that in there. Send that in there. Stretch a block a little bit. I like straight lines, right? And that the output now will be the torque. And so that's our inverse mechanics. Motion comes in. I think I will keep that. M-O-T-I-O-N, and torque comes out. And we're not using the position command here, and so I'll just terminate that. But otherwise, I think that's what I want. And so we'll just hit the space bar, and that looks pretty good. So there's our inverse mechanics, and I feel good sending that in, although I'm already seeing something, all right? that when I multiply J by angular acceleration, that's always in radians. And so let's introduce a conversion for that. And so we'll do it with a gain block. And the conversion I do all the time, so I have it memorized, pi divided by 180. Okay, and so, uh, so it's a calculation made in terms of radiance. And right, let's do the same thing electrically. All right, and I'm going to make a design choice here. I'm going to say, well, that inductance is so small. So I'm going to 
presume it doesn't contribute too much. But probably the main reason is the I do not like numerically kind of assessing derivatives. And so I don't want to take the derivative of current to get di dt. All right. And, and we'll see how we do. So but for the most part, I'm getting rid of that piece. All right. And, and so that means that the the voltage is going to be composed of the back EMF, which really is already calculated for us. And so I'm going to just take that right there. All right. And then it's going to be the the I times R component of voltage. All right. And so so anyways, um, our knowledge of torques be pretty helpful for us here because as I've come to really understand pretty well, it's a torque electrically is going to be proportional to current, at least for a DC motor is precisely proportional to current, right? And so to get that current calculation, I'll take one of these Ks. I'll take the torque and I will divide that torque to get I. And I'll put that in and maybe I'll just choose one of these. All right, let's turn this into two and we'll make two entries. So instead of being minus plus minus, make it plus plus. And that looks pretty good. That looks good. And our output will be volts. And so let's just get rid of all this. I'll just call it V. All right. So I think we got it. All right. We made some choices, and we'll see how those choices do. All right. I think I'll put the torque as my number one import. So I don't have to have those lines crossing. And so now I can kind of match that up like that. All right. And let's see, we want it in radians here too. And so I'll take the motion signal and let's introduce a selector block. And we'll pick off the second signal. All right. So all that it's looking pretty good. And so uh, to use it, let's take our PVA as expressed in degrees per second. Our voltage will be a combination of feedback and feed forward. And so we'll add these two signals. Okay, and let's see how we do. Well, isn't that cool? Okay, so in simulation, we do even a little bit better, right? And um, I think we'll do like one more video and we'll go back to the hardware and we'll try out this one that we just created. And um, we'll kind of conclude this series and talk about, you know, you know, because we're really good as engineers at this point, making DC motors spin exactly the way we want them to. And we'll kind of fully flesh out kind of, I'd say the last option, or at least we'll introduce the last option, which is use better hardware, operate at higher sample rates and, and kind of um, assess as best we can with this Arduino processor, the um, positive things that we can do with higher sample rates. So anyways, thank you.